video walkthrough on Coleman Lantern. Start in the back. They're pre-wired for a backup camera. Now it does not come with a backup camera. That's going to be a separate purchase. If you choose to have us install one, just make sure you let somebody know. We can try to get that done. It does use power from those marker lights up there. So the running lights on your tow vehicle need to be on for the camera to work. Outdoor shower. Hot and cold. Good for washing uh, kids' feet off if you have pets. Um, well, your feet, if you go out uh, in the beach, someone's got dirty, good to be doing that. Bubble caps come off, that's going to be the perfect spot to store your sewer hose. This does not come with a sewer hose, that's going to have to be something you purchase separately. Cable inlet. So if you're going to someone that provides cable, you can hook it up through there. City water connection, this is where you're going to hook your hose to to run off your city water pressure. You don't need your pump running off of city water. Right over here, we got a black tank flush, so you can hook a hose up here as you're dumping your black tank. Turn the hose on, there's a small little sprayer in the black tank that'll kind of help flush everything out. And then you have your valves right here. Always make sure these are closed if you take your cap off, because you might get a little bit of residue on you. And then I always recommend doing the black tank first. Once the black is all the way empty, then I do the gray. That'll flush out the hose, so you don't have to carry around a hose with black tank water on it. Show cord. It's built in, it's about as far as that it goes, and you can see about how long it is. About 20, 25 feet long. And then you can close that like that. Just don't forget you're plugged in when you take off with it. Slide out closed for now. We'll, we'll open it when we go on the inside. You have another dump area right here. This is just a gray tank. This will be for your just your kitchen sink. They usually call it a galley tank. Or gray, It'll, sometimes it's labeled gray too. Got some cranks. This will be a backup for your slide out, usually, or your or, and your tongue jack. I don't know if we got it. There you go. This one right here is a backup for your uh, stabilizing jacks. Right here, good information. You got your unloaded vehicle weight, got your your VIN, your gross vehicle weight rating, how much you weigh um, with all your water and all whatnot. But the most important number is this one right here, 65 psi. That's what you're going to go off of when you check your tires. Um, they're filled to 65 now, uh, but every once in a while, you are going to want to check them. Group 24 RV Marine Gray battery, brand new battery. In the winter, I recommend taking it out, completely out, storing it somewhere warmer than being sat outside. And then I recommend disconnecting the negative lead if it's going to be a long time between trips, so that way nothing's using your battery while you're away. Dual 20 pound cylinders. They are filled, so you don't have to worry about getting them filled. Got your selector, so it's pointing to this one. It's going to pull from this tank first. Let's turn it off because I like to give people the campers with their propane off. Once this one's depleted, there's a little diaphragm in here that'll automatically open up and switch to pulling from this tank if this one were to be on as well. If it weren't on, it's just going to run out of propane. Um, this does not rotate, indicating it has switched, so keep that in the back of your mind. And then some people have it in the middle, thinking it's going to pull from both tanks equally. It doesn't work that way. It's one or the other. Power tongue tack with a light. Let me tell you, that beats hand cranking it every day of the week. Your chains, you know, crossing when you have it hooked up. This will get hooked up with your truck as well. That leads to that box right there. That's your breakaway. So forever to come unhooked. From the hitch work, it'll pull that pin out of the box, activate the brakes on the trailer, keep everyone safe. And then you got your seven way right here, that'll get plugged into the back of your truck. That's what allows the brakes on the camper to work and the turn signals and marker lights and whatnot. The only way the brakes work on this is if you have a brake controller in your truck. So hopefully you do. Well, that'll have to be something we have. And this is just the other side of that storage, it passes all the way through. You got pre-wired for Furion brand solar charger. Um, you have to buy the solar kit that comes with everything you need. Um, so you can trickle charge your batteries off of solar. Stabilizer jack right here. Let's do the, let's do the front ones because they work exactly the same as the back ones. You'll have one come down. Then the other one. That's it. These are stabilizing jacks. 
They are not leveling jacks. Do not try to pick up your camper with these jacks to get it level. You will break them. If you want it level front to back, use your tongue jack to get it level front to back, side to side, block some to your tires as you're back in it. There is a self-resetting breaker in these that will help prevent any damage. It'll, it'll reset itself, but if for any reason it doesn't it doesn't work, and you bend these, and you bend these, well, they don't just bend on their own. So if you come in and one of your complaints is a bent jack, um, usually warranty won't cover that because that's considered customer damage. Like I said, do not try to use this to pick up the weight of the trailer. They're not leveling jacks. They're stabilizers. Water heater, super simple. Only thing you'll have to do when you get this, hand thread your plug into here. And then 15 16 is the socket size. I use a little short socket with an extension, ratchet and wrench. Snug it the rest of the way. Um, they do make a special tool for it. It's more like a box end wrench. I don't like using it because um, I just scrape my knuckles on all that metal right here. And then once you get the plug in, it'll start filling automatically whether you do it from your fresh tank with your pump or your city water via city water pressure. It'll start filling up once it's filled. Good to kick it on. It's super simple. Now, I definitely recommend draining it after every trip. You don't want water sitting. You don't want it sitting half full of water because it'll start to get stagnant. It'll be smelly. It'll be a pain in the butt to flush out. So before you pull this plug out to drain it, shut off all sources of water. Open up your pressure relief. Once the water stops squirting out, snap it closed. Then you can take your plug out. If you neglect to do this, you're gonna get a hot bath. Well, hot if you've been running. If you haven't been running it, you're still gonna get a bath because all that well, pressure is now gonna come out this way. And then clean in here. Clean in here quite often. Fresh tank fill, just rest your hose in there, don't jam it in there, it's gravity fill. Um, watch its progress on the monitoring panel. Don't wait for you to, you to hear water squirt out everywhere. And then just like your water heater, I recommend draining it after every trip. There's your drain port right there. Range vent, if you're going to use your fan on your range hood, make sure this is open. There's a little, there's a little, little flap in there. Make sure it's open so it has somewhere to actually vent to. Close it when you travel, and I like to close mine overnight so I don't have like mosquitoes or anything work their way in there. Exhaust for your furnace. Keep it clean. Clean in here quite often. They do make screens for these. That's good to keep road debris and spider webs and whatnot out of there. And then fridge vent. Make sure you clean up in here often. I even recommend taking this whole panel off and cleaning back there every once in a while. Outdoor power. It's GFCI protected. All your GFCIs are on the same circuit. If any of them would have trip, they're all the connected ones would trip as well. Outdoor kitchen with a mini fridge. This works like your standard mini fridge. It'll only work when you're plugged in. It doesn't work off propane like your main fridge inside works. Outdoor cooktop or range grill, whatever you want to call it. Unbutton that, slide it out, latch it open like that. You have a propane line right there where it goes into this quick disconnect right here and then you have that gray valve to open. And then all you do to use it is turn it on to light and then light it with a barbecue lighter or a match, whatever you have. Always recommend snapping this when you travel though so this isn't banging back and forth on the inside of this compartment door. And then back jack works the same as the front one. Remember, stabilizer jacks, not leveling jacks. So we'll start right here, turn interior lights on. That's your monitoring panel, you can read battery, it's always going to read full when you're plugged in. And you have fresh, black, gray one, gray two, gray two, it's just going to be your kitchen sink. And you have an awning extend and retract. We can't go all the way open, we'll stop here, they are adjustable when it's all the way open, you grab here, push and pull, we'll pull it down, that's going to pitch one, one end of it down. Both ends are adjustable, so you can have water pitch off to the corner or lower it if the sun's in your eyes. If you have it open during the rainstorm, watch the rain, watch the wind. If it starts getting really windy, really rainy, roll the dang thing up. You don't want your fabric to tear. You don't want these arms to bend. Um, and then if you roll it in wet, um, as soon as you get the chance to, as soon as it gets sunny out, roll it back out, let it dry off before you roll it back in again because you don't want it to hold moisture. Water heater on gas, click that, once on gas, the burner will cycle on and off once it reaches its um, predetermined, um, unchangeable set temperature to like 100, 120 degrees. Controls for your water pump, exterior lights, which do these awning lights, 
interior lights, which do these main row of lights, and then you have your controls for your slide out. No riders, don't have children sitting in your slide out if you have children. Um, I wouldn't recommend storing large heavy items in your slide out either. Um, it's not meant to support a whole heck ton of weight. And then um, watch what's on the floor. Um, what you're looking out for is is uh, gravel, toys, if you have kids. Because believe it or not, even the smallest piece of gravel or rock stuck on this floor when you close your slide out, there is a chance that it could cut your floor. So just keep this area in front of your slide out nice and clear and clean. I right, move this way. Dual bunks. I'll uh, USB out of there. Clicky light there. Same thing over here. The light's on the wall over here. We'll go into the bathroom. Ooh. Bathroom's super simple. Light switch for in here. Resetable GFCI. Any GFCI that trips, this is the yellow that you come reset it at. Shower is super simple. Just turn it on with your knobs. Lift this up. Turns it to turns it to the shower. If not, it'll be like in bath mode. Got a fan here. Click that to turn it on, and then you see crank to crank it up or down. Definitely recommend running that when you take any sort of shower, just to keep these moisture off the walls. Your toilet. So you can't squeeze in. There's a pedal right here. As long as you're pushing the pedal, it's gonna keep flushing. Yeah, not a whole really heck of a lot in here. But everything, it's got everything you need in it. Right over here, breaker box. All your breakers for your 120 volt appliances. All your fuses for your 12 volt. So you have some 15s and 240s. Definitely recommend just carrying a box of assorted, assorted fuses just in case. Thermostat, super simple. First thing I'll ask is what fan mode you want, auto, high, or low. This will also just run the fan on the AC. Um, I believe, usually, no, never mind. Cool. So there's no just fan. So your fan mode, recommend just leaving an auto. It's going to allow it to cycle on and off at its set temperature. So you have it set to 65. Once it hits 65, your AC will cycle off. And then as it warms back up in here, cycle back on again to help kind of regulate that temperature. If you just add it, have it on high or low, um, what it's going to do is that once it hits that temperature, it's not going to shut off. It's going to keep running. And the reason I don't recommend doing that is because your AC can eventually freeze up. And tap it again. Go to 90. Tap it again. Not 90, but furnace. Furnace goes to 90. Tap it again. Turns off. Spot for a TV. If you wanted to mount it, mount it here. Then you have power cable outlet. Um, you have the Wi-Fi. It does not have the Wi-Fi thing on it, but you're set up for it. Then you have antenna. If you use your antenna, that is cable. That is antenna. Radio, super simple. Tap it, turn it on. You have different zones. Zone 1 is inside. So you can turn inside speakers out. And just have the outdoor ones on, or you can have the, just the indoor ones on, both on, both off. Numbers right here, push and hold to save a preset. And you have play, pause, stop, forward, reverse. For your channels, Bluetooth, and then mode button. You can Bluetooth your phone to this, then you have auxiliary cord right, port right there. If you notice, right over here, I've got a button that says AC or fireplace. Since this is only 30 amp, you can only run one at a time. So if you want your AC, turn it up to AC. If you want your fireplace, turn it down to fireplace. And there should be a remote for your fireplace. Let's see if we can't find that. Bet you it's in here. Bet you it's in here. In here. Kind of uh, skipping around in here. You've got all your manuals. Ow. Hit my head. So this Dutchman one is a very broad manual. It covers all of Dutchman's products. But I definitely recommend gl glossing through that. Because that will tell you something maybe I didn't tell you. To find your remote for your fireplace. There's got to be one. There has got to be one. Sometimes they they do have them without remotes, but I want you to make sure you guys know where to to find it. I'm gonna set this camera down for a second. Give me a minute. A second. One second. Alright. I didn't find the remote in there. But it is around here somewhere. Oh. But I did find. Usually they come with this. Provisions for a toilet paper roll holder. 
Um, they don't install them from the factory because no matter where they put them at the factory, someone out there is going to complain. It's not in the right spot. So we'll just move along. It's got to be around here somewhere. I apologize, folks. Just making this video longer than it needs to be. And like I said, sometimes they're, uh, they don't have fireplace remotes, but I don't see why this one wouldn't. But as we continue along, we can show you that you have a power button right here. Then you can change color of the flame, intensity of the heat, and temperature of the heat. Fridge, super simple. You got one button. Oh, found it. And here's the remote for your radio, too. So if there is a remote for your radio, which is nice so you don't have to get up to change the channel or skip a song. Alright, again, apologize. There's your remotes over there. Back to the the fridge. Super simple. You have one button on or off. That's off. On. Its only mode is auto, so it will default to 110. If it were to lose 110, it'll automatically switch to running off of propane. Unlike your fridge at home, these do take about 10 to 12 hours to get to operating temperature, so keep that in mind. Microwave works just like your standard household microwave. Nothing real special about it. it needs to be plugged. The camera needs to be plugged in for it to work. Fan. And light, remember if you're gonna have this fan running to have that flap on the outside open. Your cooktop, super simple, fold up, turn it to this flame, and then twist to light. It works the same on all of them. The oven works a little bit differently. You turn this to the flame, push and hold. As you're pushing, holding that, twist your sparker. What you're looking for is that pilot back in there to light. What's nice because you can use the sparker to light them. A lot of them you have to light it manually once it's lit. You can change the temperature. Um, if you're going to turn it off, if you turn it to this flame right here, it shuts the burners off but leaves the pilot on. That way you don't have to relight it. Definitely recommend turning it off before you go to bed. And then you do have oven light, which also turns on these decorative lights on these knobs. Here, this. There we go. Wait. Now they're all facing the same way. Back over here. Table turns into your bed, just lift it up, pop them legs out of the table, pop the legs out of the floor, rest the table on these little black bumpers, back cushions, lay them on the table, creates a platform to sleep on. This over here turns into your bed too, it's just a jackknife, lift up, pull out, lift up, push in, you do have storage underneath there, as well as fold down, cup holders, and then they... Nice cup holders, nice to have that so you can have drinks while watching your TV if you install one. Come on in through your bedroom. Lights, you just turn on at the ceiling just by clicking them. Both work that way. You have an exit just so you can come in and out of the bedroom just through that door. Outlet, dual USB port. Outlet, dual USB port. And then clicking light above the bed. Plenty of storage on either side of the bed. Spot to mount a TV right here. Cable outlet, regular outlet. Generally, the mount, the screws that come with your TV mount, they're meant for putting in a 2x4, so they're pretty long. I would recommend just double checking if you buy a mount to mount a TV in here how long your screws are, because if you screw into the outside of this camper, that's not a, that's something you'll have to you'll pay to get fixed. That's not a, covered by any warranty. That's pretty obvious. That's customer damage. And then your sliding door, nice big sliding door. Unclip it. Slide this over. This kind of rests against the wall. There's no way to lock it closed, really. And then it does lock open, and that's for a reason. When you travel, make sure you snap this open. Um, so it's not sliding everywhere, banging against the wall. Sometimes if it comes loose and someone forgot to snap, strap it closed, you'll see like a big square-shaped dent in the wall over there. All right. Well, that concludes our... Uh, Oh, wait, hold on. A few more things I want to cover. Let's see, where did I see it at? It's not in here. It was on the floor over there. Oh, right here. Carbon monoxide and propane gas alarm. Um, that's hardwired to the 12-volt system. You can tell when it needs to be replaced. That is uh, 
you know, no batteries you have to worry about changing. However, if that main battery up front starts to die, this will give low voltage chirps. So just like your smoke alarm. Well, but if the smoke alarm starts giving those low voltage chirps, replace we'll throw a new 9 volt battery in it. And then I think the other closet, nice deep closet, a light in there. Put any unruly disbehaving children in here. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. All right. Now that concludes our uh, video tour of your uh, Coleman uh, lantern. Hope you guys uh, found it informative. Hope you guys enjoy this uh, using this camper. I really like the setup of this one. So I hope you guys do too. And goodbye.